Thanks for staying tuned and time for international news. Here is Around the World in Five with Amarachi Ubani. Begin with Brexit. As the UK's Prime Minister Theresa May says, an extension is needed for the UK to leave the European Union. I've always been clear that we could make a success of no deal in the long term. But leaving with a deal is the best solution. So we will need a further extension of Article 50, one that is as short as possible and which ends when we pass a deal. Earlier, the EU's chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, said a no-deal Brexit is now more likely but can still be avoided. Michel Barnier said a long extension to the UK's current April 12 exit date carries significant risks for the EU and that a strong justification would be needed before the EU can agree. The House of Commons also consistently rejected leaving the EU without an agreement. However, ladies and gentlemen, the only way to avoid a no-deal Brexit, the only way to avoid a no-deal Brexit is and will be through a positive majority. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's AK party is contesting this slim opposition victory in the country's biggest city, Istanbul. Sunday's municipal elections also delivered opposition CHP wins in the capital, Ankara, and in Izmir. The AKP alleges irregularities and is challenging the results in every Istanbul district. Officially, the CHP is ahead by 25,000 votes in the city. Senegalese President Macky Sall is vowing to fast-track his governmental reforms as he begins his second term in office. Mr. Sall was sworn in at an inauguration ceremony in the city of Diamniadio with several African leaders in attendance, including Nigeria's President Mohamedou Buhari. Mr. Sall took 58% of the votes in February's election, in which he faced four challengers, but was accused of preventing some of his main rivals from running. Senegal is one of Africa's most stable democracies. It has not experienced military intervention since independence in 1960. In the United States, top Democrat Nancy Pelosi says allegations against former Vice President Joe Biden of inappropriate touching should not disqualify him from running for president. But he needs to understand that people's space is important, she says. Her comments come as a second woman levels accusations against Mr. Biden. The former vice president who ponders a run for the White House in 2020 has said he does not believe he has ever acted inappropriately. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump says he wants to wait until after the 2020 elections to draft a new health care plan to replace the Affordable Care Act. The move reverses Mr. Trump's call last week to quickly scrap ex-President Obama's signature law, taking some Republicans in Congress by surprise. It comes as the Justice Department backed the lawsuit aiming to strike down the health care law as unconstitutional. Iran has ordered the evacuation of about 70 villages in the southwestern province of Kazakhstan due to a growing risk of floods. At least 45 people have died in the past two weeks after heavy rains, with flooding affecting at least 23 of the country's 31 provinces. The orders come as Foreign Minister Javad Zarif accused U.S. sanctions of impeding aid efforts to affected areas. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization says the Ebola outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo is spreading at its fastest rate since it was detected about eight months ago. WHO spokesperson Christian Lindmeier says a total of 72 cases were reported last week, higher than the record 57 of the previous week. Unfortunately, we have seen in the recent two weeks increase of the average uh, cases reported per week. So just this week, um, we have a 73 cases reported for the week uh, between 25 March and 31 March. Um, the week before that, we had already 57 cases, which is both much higher than the approximate average of about 26 cases we've seen all over the weeks before. The current outbreak has killed more than 600 people and has infected more than a thousand people, making it the second largest ever recorded. And finally, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are on Instagram. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan launched their own official account at Sussex Royal as the latest step in the creation of their own household ahead of the birth of their first child this month. Previously, the couple shared photos on the account run by Kessenden Palace 
which included photos of activities of Harry's elder brother, Prince William, and his family. And that's your international news around the world in five. I am Amarachi Ubani. And from there we go on to the sports news. Here is Ayotune Balogu. For the second consecutive year, Channels Television has been rewarded for its corporate social responsibility initiative, the Channels International Kids Cup, at the annual ITO NFF Football Awards. The award was presented to the station by Nigeria football legend Mr. Shegwa Degbami on Monday night in Lagos. It was a night to celebrate Nigerian football, and so former Super Eagles players, officials and followers of the game came out to make it one to remember. A major highlight of the event was a special recognition of the Super Eagles class of 1994. This is further going to bridge the distance between ex-Nigeria internationals and the NFF. Nigeria has given us everything we have. We have given everything we have to Nigeria. If we are not recognized, Nigeria will not produce another set. Last year, Channels Television received the Development Award. This year, we did it again. The winner of this award, Channels Television. Thank you so much. On behalf of the organizing committee of the channel's International Kids Cup, we want to give profound gratitude to the visioner, Mr. John Momo. We want to thank the Nigeria Football Federation. You guys gave us this award last year, and it's a testament that we're doing what you like. For the Nigeria Football Federation, this event is to tell the beautiful stories of football in the country appreciate their sponsors and also special recognition to those who have contributed to the development of the game, including the FIFA Secretary General, Fatima Samura. And that's sports news. The News at 10 continues shortly. And the main news again, the Independent National Electoral Commission today halted the collation of the River State governorship election result with an assurance that the exercise will resume at 10 a.m. tomorrow. The chief returning officer had earlier stated that collation would not exceed 5 p.m. each day. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for being with us. I'm Ladi Akiri Dulu. Good night.